Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity, a very special day in the Benefice as, for the first time since March 2020, we're holding a service in Holy Trinity Church, Ascot under Witchwood, on this their dedication Sunday. As we worship today, whether in person or online, we give thanks for the invitation God offers to us all to join in the loving dance of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So as our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth. Draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Sarah is going to read this week's Gospel lesson. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Thousands of books have been written to explore and attempt to make sense of the doctrine of the Trinity, trying to conceptualise and codify the mystery of God in human terms. And countless sermons will be preached today, trying to help people get their heads round a God who is that impossible thing, three in one and one in three. Understanding the Trinity is difficult. One commentator has said that it's like trying to figure out what colour the letter seven smells like. I think that it's important for us to remember that there was no formal doctrine of the Trinity, the three-in-one God, when the New Testament was written. However, what we do find in the New Testament are examples of the first Christian communities trying to understand what Jesus had taught them about God. Take Paul, for example. Paul wrote and talked at length about the nature of God and especially Jesus Christ. But Paul wasn't trying to define or defend the doctrine of the Trinity. Rather, he was trying to express what was emerging from his own experience. As a Jew, he naturally saw God as one. 
that God whom Jesus had re related to as Father. The Spirit he could see transforming lives and empowering the Church. And then, from his own personal experience, as it were, exploring from within, Jesus as the Son, the Christ, the one who had turned his own life upside down and inside out. Before the Gospels were written, Paul was writing things like, It is not I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And we are the body of Christ. We are members of the body of Christ. And as such, Paul was beginning to explore an understanding of the Church as a body of people caught up in the life of the Trinity. Paul was approaching it from a lived experience rather than an impersonal doctrine. His oneness with Christ leading him into the experience of Jesus' relationship with God as Father. That theme of unity in relationship runs through a good deal of the early Christian writings and on into the medieval mystics. And we can see it in Rublev's famous icon of the Trinity. The three figures of the Trinity sit around a table, all relating to each other. No one is claiming precedence or attention. At the centre of the table is a chalice representing the self-giving love at the heart of their life. But there is also a space at the table, and as we gaze at the icon, we are drawn into it. We are welcomed to the table, into the life and love of the Trinity. This is nothing short of the new birth that Jesus speaks of to Nicodemus in our Gospel reading a new spiritual life through which we are drawn into a new intimacy with God, crying out, Abba, Father, as Paul says. Elsewhere in John's Gospel, Jesus promises that the Father and the Son will make their home within us, and the Spirit will be within us as we will one day find our home with him. Perhaps rather than trying to understand the mystery that is the Trinity, we should ask ourselves what impact does the life and love of the Trinity have on us? What difference does our new spiritual birth make to the rest of our lives? I would suggest that the life and love of the Trinity is not simply something we believe, but something in which we are caught up and transformed. When we cry out, Abba, Father, to God in prayer, we are surrounded by the love of the Trinity. We are immersed in the life of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He is behind us, before us, beneath us, above us, within us. Nothing can separate us from his love. We need to remind ourselves daily of the depth of this love and open ourselves up to it through prayer. Then we will discover that the Trinity is not a difficult doctrine to believe in, but it is the source of life and love. If we allow him, God can and will transform us and our lives. Over time, this love can make us different people. This transformation of love begins here and now in the midst of our ordinary lives and will only be completed when we are finally caught up in the life and love of God, the Trinity, forever.
Deborah is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. The response to the petition, may your will be done, is on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, may the church reflect your community and unity. May there be godly harmony, shared ministry, mutual support and encouragement in the faith. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the world's leaders seek not personal power but the public good. May conflicts be faced honestly and needs recognised and met. May all our communities be built on what is good, true, just and right. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may there be love and respect for one another in every household. May there be mutual support and thoughtfulness, consideration and trust. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the heart's cries for help be heard, the tears collected and the fears quieted. May suffering be eased and guilt erased through your healing love. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the dead rise to new and eternal life, freed from their aching and restored forever. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we pour out to you our praise and wonder at the hidden mysterious holiness of your being, so full of glory and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to God through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There'll be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and on the Benefits website. For those who are able to join us in person, there'll also be a service in Spelsbury Church at 10 a.m. All of our churches are open on Sundays between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And don't forget that we're still having our online coffee mornings at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays in the Benefits Zoom room. Details of how to join are also on our website. This Sunday is my last Sunday before I begin a three-month sabbatical. It's been 12 years now since my last one and I'm looking forward to a change of pace. I've written something about what I hope to do during this time, which you can find on our website under news if you're interested. I'm incredibly grateful to Ilona who will be covering for me during this time and I know that I'm leaving the benefits in very safe hands. I look forward to returning to work on the 12th of September. In the meantime, please pray for me as I will be praying for you. And so our service now ends with a blessing. May God the Father who created you keep you safely within his eternal love. May God the Son who came to save you walk with you on your journey of faith. May God the Holy Spirit who lives within you strengthen and encourage you and fill you with the love and light of God. 
and may the blessing of the Holy Trinity, the one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen.